Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we're going to continue to work on our override orb script. And we're going to put in the big meaty parts of how to make our override orb tappable, draggable, and throwable for our player. If you remember, we had a lot going on with this script already. And just looking at the update loop, it's, it's a little overwhelming, to be honest. But once we work through some of the logic, you'll understand why, and it's not going to be so bad. So let's dive in. We're going to be diving in feet first with a big concept that some of you may not be familiar with. It's called platform dependent compilation. So just to type it out, platform dependent compilation. And what this means is Unity is going to compile these functions and it's going to turn it into commands based on what platform we're using. And it's going to do this based on some commands we give it, defining directives for that platform. So simply put, we're going to give Unity some special commands to tell it, hey, I only want this code to run if we're on the correct platform. Maybe an example would be the best way to show you this. So for update input status, really we're looking for the touch. On a mobile device, we're going to need the touch information, but in the editor, we don't have that available. So really we've got two options in front of us. Option one is we can make sure we're testing on a real device every time we compile this, which is doable, but it's kind of annoying. Option two, is we handle it with code. And that's the option we're going to go with here. So just to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to use the pound sign. And that is a key symbol for what's called a directive, which is how we direct Unity in what to do. So I'm going to say if Unity underscore, I wish it wouldn't do that, editor. Then we'll run this code. And then we can just say, and if, and continue on as normal. And then I can say, if not Unity Editor, and if. And I can run some code here. And then we can continue on in this function as normal. And just to briefly go over all the options that are here for you, let's take a look. I'm just going to type in Unity and look at some of the constants that they have available. Here, we can check to see what version of Unity we're in, or rather, we can make some code based on the version of Unity. We can check if Analytics is on. We can check Android. We can even check the Android API level. We can also check if we can show the splash screen or not, what kind of editor we're in, whether it's 64-bit, Windows, or just generic editor. We can even check if we have Google VR. Tango, iOS, PS4, Samsung TV, Standalone, Team License, Tizen. There are a whole bunch of options here. The key takeaway here, is if you need to run special code depending on what platform you're on, then this is a great way to do that. So what code do we want in this input update status function? Well, if we're in the Unity editor, then we want to say if input.get mouse button down for zero, so the left click, then input status equals input status dot grabbing. Because this is when we first grab on, is when we press down on the mouse button. Else, if input dot get mouse button for zero, so if they're holding down the left click button, then our input status is going to be input status dot holding, else if input dot 
get mouse button up for mouse button zero. So if they've just let go of the button, then input status equals input status dot releasing. See how this is working? Else, so if it's none of those, then our input status is going to be input status dot none because the user isn't interacting with the orb in question at this point in time. So that takes care of what if we're in the Unity editor, but what if we're not? What if our users are on an actual device? Well, in this case, we're using the if not Unity editor because we only plan to release this on devices with GPS capabilities. So we're talking phones, which means we know that the input.getTouch is what we're going to go after. We won't be releasing this for any kind of PC or the PlayStation 4 or Xbox One or any other console or any other kind of non-mobile device. So we can safely say that we're going to use input.getTouch. So first we want to check if the user is beginning the touch. So if input.getTouch zero dot phase equals touch phase dot began and you may have noticed something here this is really important to remember the whole point of platform dependent compilation is unity only cares about the code for the current platform and since our current platform, the thing that we're on, what it's going to process is the Unity editor, it doesn't care about this code. On a really technical level, the reason this is so important is we could technically run an if statement every time this update loop runs to check and see what device we're on. But the player won't be switching devices or platforms in the middle of gameplay. So we know it's always going to be the same, which means when Unity goes to compile and run, it's going to completely ignore everything here, or rather everything in whatever section of code is marked for a different platform. It's like it never even existed. The flip side to that, though, is right now my IDE, because it's so smart, isn't going to pick up on anything that I do in this section because it's ignoring all of this. And you'll notice it says it's an inactive preprocessor branch. So to make sure that I'm utilizing everything my IDE has for development, I'm actually going to do this section of code outside of here and then paste it in just to make sure I've got autocomplete and error checking and all of that stuff. So here in input.getTouch, zero.phase equals touchphase.began. So if the user just started touching the screen, we want to say input status equals input status dot grabbing. Else if input dot get touch zero dot touch oops dot phase equals touch phase dot ended. input status equals input status dot releasing else if input dot touch count equals one and input status equals input status dot holding and I put a capital I here in this input status that should be lowercase and then we just say else input status equals input status dot none to say, hey, they're not interacting. OK, cool. Now I'm just going to cut this whole section and paste it in here. And we're done. That's it. I know that this was a lot of information to digest. So I think we're going to go ahead and call this video good. 
and give you a little time to think about this and why it's so important. The big takeaway from this video is really platform dependent compilation and its role in our scripts and how it can really be useful for making sure that we've got the right stuff at the right time and that our code is built for the platform we're on. These are super important and really, really helpful in Unity development. Just to really drive the idea home, let's, let's talk about this for a second. Inside of the Unity editor, we have access to the input.get mouse button. That's because we're on a computer and it's got a mouse. Now, what happens if we were on, say, an Xbox or a PlayStation 4 and there is no mouse? We can't very well get mouse button down or any other kind of mouse function because it doesn't have a mouse. And the same goes for mobile devices. It uses touches. A mobile device uses touches rather than the mouse. Now, for some things, the mouse button functions do work, but where we're wanting to check for phase, it's much safer for us to use the actual input and the actual functions that were meant for mobile devices, especially in terms of things like touch count. So using platform dependent compilation, which is just a big scary word for code based on what you're on, is a really huge help. And it's a great way to be able to write universal functions and not have to worry about what platform you're on or what's available to you when calling from an outside source. These help us write really safe code and therefore better code. If you didn't know about these before, then you do now, and that's a great thing for you as a game developer. So congratulations. Great job following along. Take some time and think about how you might implement this in your own games or in some of the functions that we've done in the past. And as you explore it, you'll really start to understand why it's so important. Again, great job, and I'm excited to see what you do with this info. This is Ben with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.